Horizon Zero Dawn is an absolute monster of a game to finish. It will test your sk- it will test your priorities as a busy gamer and I personally finished everything I wanted to finish in roughly 95 hours. If you finish the game, I want to know how long it took you to finish, so sound off in the comments below. Personally, I did every main quest, side quest, errand, map unlock, melee pit, salvage contract, rebel camp, and rebel outpost. I also dabbled in some hunting grounds, I dabbled in the arena, and I dabbled in some collectible drones. Those 95 hours in real life took me from June 2022, excuse me, took me from February 2022 to June 2022, and that was playing at a rate of about about an hour every every night for for two or three nights nights during the week, and five or six hours on Friday nights, my my big gaming nights. That's not typically how I do PlayStation games. Usually, I I, I I have my big gaming night on Friday nights for five to six hours, the and and roughly two to three hours on Saturday nights if I have time, and then I. And if I have time, I will also game on my Switch throughout the week periodically, which is which is in short bursts. For me, to say I had other stuff going on and intentionally make time for this, my, my most valuable currency, is really saying something. As a, as a husband, as a father of two... I, I went to play Horizon Forbidden West, and that, that says something about the game. So what type of busy person are you? Are you, are you a mom that, or, or are you a dad that live busy lives? Are you a student that's studying for an exam? Are you a doctor with lives to save and care for? Let me know in the comments below, and, I, I want, I, and next time I make a video, I want to do a review with you specifically in mind. Before I get into today's review, I want to let you know about Will Woodworking and Custom Laser Engraving. 25 subscribers and 9 videos into the journey and we have our first sponsor. Choose from a variety of cups including tumblers, beverage holders, pints, pilsners, wine tumblers, water bottles, and ring necks as well as cutting boards. I got my own merch with the Datamer logo engraved on it and when you purchase $35 or more and use the code Datamer10 you will get 10% off your order. Now is the time to th start thinking about holiday gifts, and what better way to kick things off with a customized cup from Will Ward Working and Laser Engraving. Help out the channel by helping them, link in the description below, and now, back to Horizon. Horizon Forbidden West picks up right after the events of Horizon Zero Dawn, but not necessarily right after the events of the Frozen Wilds. Aloy needs to find out why a poison is spreading throughout the land, killing animals and leaving humans in dire straits during the walk of life, leading her team up to both characters from the last game and new faces alike. My memory is pretty fuzzy on some of the details of the first game. I I do remember a lot of what I played. It's just I I took a few I took a little bit between pr playing the first game and the second game that I looked for a podcast and I found one called Lightkeeper Protocol. I linked to that in the description below. This was hosted by Jarrett Redding and Christina Zamorelli and that helped me catch up on a lot of the details of Zero Dawn before playing Forbidden West. They do a great job in walking you through the first game when you don't have time to go back to play both games and they serve as a good listening experience to reminisce about playing while you do other things. My personal favorite thing about Horizon Forbidden West is not exactly the plot, although it, that that is excellent, but the world building. I don't think I've ever seen world building quite like this in any video game before. If you've ever played Horizon Zero Dawn, you'll be familiar with some aspects, and then there's also new aspects. Part of why this game took me over 95 hours to finish is because I would stop to take pictures in photo mode and explore every bit of the dialogue options and just overall soak up the entire environment. If I wasn't using my time doing main quests or side quests, it was just like exploring the map. That, that, that being said, did I finish the map? Um, almost. I didn't quite 100% it, but the game is just so massive that for people like us busy gamers, sometimes you just gotta 
make a decision. Is it is it worth clearing this section of the map for completionist's sake, or should I just move forward? Let me know. Uh, let me know what your favorite part of the map is in in the comments. For me. It was a toss-up between Las Vegas and San Francisco Bay Area. The, the the color palettes in this game are just on a whole nother level. And I and I didn't even play PS5. I because I mean particularly because I don't own one yet. I played on my PS4 Pro. Looked amazing. The characters in this game are really diverse and really interesting. In this game, I'm I'm a big Lance Re Lance Reddick fan fan since Lost and Fringe. He definitely helps. Uh, he definitely keeps Aloy on our on our toes in this game, and is a very mysterious character. It's kind of kind of frustrating, in in a good way where he has you just hooked. Aloy herself, you'll hear in different reviews. Is I mean is kind of kind of wooden take that take that what you will i personally think she's more interesting of a character than laura croft is she's a little over the top at times but she really does earn your trust and she really does earn you rooting for her over time another character i really like erin is seriously hilarious i i can definitely relate to him because of all his air banding Varl also makes a comeback here too, and is another great character. One of the newcomers I really enjoyed following was Catalo. He is pretty vicious at first, but he ends up becoming a very likable character by the end of his arc. Also funny comment on the names here is that I think most of them made me chuckle because most of them are regular names with one letter that's off or tweaked so that they they sound more tribal. You have Aloy versus Ali. You have Carl versus Varl. You have Erend versus Aaron. Rost versus Ross. For the gameplay of Horizon Forbidden West, this is going to take several sections of video. So first, I'd like to talk about quest structure. Like Horizon Zero Dawn before it, Forbidden West is a absolute master of storytelling. Main quests have story, side quests have story, errands have story. A lot of a lot of stuff has has a lot of stuff tells you a story within the game, which I appreciate. I am in love with stories. Stuff like this is really good for busy gamers because if you don't have much time and you want to at least invest a little bit by the end of each night, instead of just going to grab a tusk from a hippo to get an, an upgrade for a, for a weapon this game gives you a little bit of narrative throughout the world to aid in instead of just doing a fetch quest side quests also have a little bit more meat on them and on top of this you have collectibles you have old rundown houses to raid you have the return of map quests after 95 hours did I, I did not 100% this game. Instead, I found the main quest, side quest, errands, and map unlocks to be worth spending time on. Let me know what you guys spent your time on in, in, the, in the comments. Did you 100%? Did you not 100%? Tell me what you spent your time on in the comments below. Now, this is kind of a spoilerish tangent, but it it's worth sharing in, in, the, in this review, so I'll tag spoilers. One of the main, one of the side quests in the game had me in quite, quite shock and awe. One of the days I was, I was playing it. So I was, it was on a Friday night. It was on my big gaming night. So I remember starting a quest around one o'clock in the morning, and I was thinking, you know, this quest is not going to get more than, it's not going to take more than forty-five minutes. After I had gotten an underwater breather, of course, I wanted to try it out. The quest involved me looking for something underwater and I would take my sweet old time looking 20 to 30 minutes looking around which led me to what looked like a big hotel underwater. There's more to explore under here. Then I get to the doors of the hotel after 10 minutes and whoa I see like a big sea monster coming around and and, and swimming around. Luckily it didn't see me but now I'm in this big open area. I've un I've unlocked Pandora's box. And now I'm in this big open area where I have to hide from sea monsters in the seaweed. And let me tell you one thing. It doesn't matter if you're maxed out at the highest level. If 
sea monsters find you, all you can do is do is throw smoke bombs and run away. You are not beating these guys underwater. They they are the kings of underwater. To me, this added to the intensity of the area. So now I'm playing super conservatively, trying not to get caught by these things, and I'm about to end the quest, and I end up having to face this giant sea monster in an epic boss battle. And I'm telling you, the feels that this game gives you are intense. They are they're very emotional, and it got me very much involved in the game. And I finished that quest around three in the morning, which I should have probably gone to bed around one, one thirty, something like that. From a busy person's perspective, if you've watched any game review of Horizon Forbidden West out there, you will know that this game takes roughly about 13 hours for you to actually reach the Forbidden West, which at first I thought was odd, but ultimately I'm, I'm actually happy because the game just gives you so much content. It's, just, it's, it's overwhelmingly awesome. It's like being trapped inside one of your favorite books when, and, or, or, or shows when you want to know more about the world and more about the backstory and the lore. And every page you turn you, or, or, or every episode you watch inevitably raises more questions but also piques your interest and you've just got to have more. That's, that's, what the, that's what this game does. This aspect of the game doesn't exactly lend itself to busy gamers but I promise you it's it's worth the, the long intro. Next up on the list is weapons. If I told you Horizon Forbidden West had options, it would be like my wife asking me what I want for dinner tonight, and I said, well, what do you have available? And she says, well, we have pizza, tacos, salad, chicken, burgers, tilapia, cod, breakfast for dinner, veal, cold cuts, chicken cacciatore, appetizers, grilled ham sandwiches, shrimp, snow, pea, stir fry, turkey, chicken salad, pad thai, or pork chops. And I just look at her like a deer in headlights. That is to say that there are a lot of weapons and upgrades to those weapons on top of that. Some weapons hit really hard, but they slow your movement. Some weapons are very light on damage, but it, it, it improves your man, your maneuverability. Part of why, again, this game took me 95 hours was to is because I spent a long time upgrading some of my weapons and and armor. If you play like me, then you will pretty much stick to tear arrows or Taros, thank you every dad in the world for for making that joke. The benefit of these is 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 two reasons. If you're hunting for weapon or armor upgrades and if you are high enough leveled, then you can shoot off parts uh like a like a tail or a horn and and grab it and don't need to waste time actually finishing off off the the animal. So does anyone else feel overwhelmed by the amount of weapons that are in this game? I mean, what weapon did you main? Let me know in the comments below. Another benefit to Horizon Forbidden West is the glider. Thank you, Breath of the Wild. You are the apple of video games. You introduce something that lots of other companies follow suit. The glider in this game is a miraculous time saver. When I went back and played Zero Dawn after playing Forbidden West, I was I had a hard time going back because the glider saves you so much time from having to retrace your steps. Just glide down to the ne to the nearest campfire or and and save and or go wherever else you're going. Call it a copycat, yeah, but it, to me it's it's worth the to me it's worth the time it saves you for for the, for the incorporation in this game. So Thank you, Breath of the Wild. Thank you, Gorilla. This is a great addition to the game. Next up is Traversal. I've heard so many games' maps being being massive that oversized maps are actually starting to sound standard in, in video games these days. This map in Horizon Forbidden West is like a lot of others. It's, it's huge. So if you want to explore all of it, I suggest doing so in bite-sized chunks. It's really tempting to disregard map exploration in favor of doing side quests, collectibles, question marks that are littered throughout throughout the map, where 
Horizon Forbidden West does better than its predecessor is I had actually had to look up in Zero Dawn how to get the unlimited travel pack. In Horizon Forbidden West, every time you discover a campfire, you can you can teleport, you can fast travel between every one that you've visited thus far. And to me, that's that's a, a much welcome addition and and makes traversal very much easier. This encourages you to first explore the map and then travel between campfires you've already visited. Another area in traversal that Forbidden West does over Zero Dawn is rock climbing. Once again, thank you to Breath of the Wild. You can scan your focus and climb, and the game is very liberal about the amount of areas it gives you to climb. You can't climb everything, but there's there's enough there to for you to save time, and instead of having to run around an entire mountain, you can just climb up to where you need to go. One last thing about them about traversal is the tall necks. Here, they again improved over Horizon Zero Dawn. They improved here by making the map so that. Instead of completely clearing so you see 100% of the area, it makes the area that you've just unlocked a lot less foggy so that when you arrive at, at the new area, you then clear it 100% so you can kind of, kind of a lot more easily see where you've been and where you need to go, pretty much. One odd thing I found about this game, it's not odd so much as it is maybe a little easy, but if you spend a lot of time doing side quests before you tackle main quests, and this is with a lot of open open world sandbox games, is you'll find yourself being overpowered compared to the enemies you need to fight. It's not Again, it's not a bad thing. I just ended up saying, eh, you know, that was a little that was a little easy, but again, you can customize the difficulty at any time you have as low as story and you have and you have as high as extremely hard when i finally faced off against the final boss the thing went down like a sack of potatoes and personally i i i do actually enjoy that feature where all the fruits of your of your labors have paid off and you do feel very empowered you will max out your skills at this lo at this level and the highest difficulty of the high, the hardest boss was probably about here. So just something to note. The final armor of Forbidden West is a little weird. It it actually pales in comparison to the first game because the first game's armor had metal plates and it, you had it had lights coming down, flowing uh, flowing down you. The armor in this game was a little bl bland, and the base of it was actually less than the fully upgraded armor that I had. And by the time I had put 80, 85, 90 hours into the game, I was, I was personally ready to be done, so I didn't feel like upgrading the final armor. Another odd thing about Forbidden West is that the humans in this game are actually harder than the machines. I would approach a Thunderjaw and start tearing parts from it and just and just go into town on this thing to defeat it in an, in a reasonable amount of time. There are two types of, of human encampments in this game. You have camps and you have outposts. And outposts are are no problem. You can you can easily pick off guys pretty quickly in, in outposts. They are smaller and take way less time to conquer. Sidebar, stealth killing with Aloy in this game is just savage. So she has animations as she shames human opponents. And it, and it is it is wonderful. Sometimes she stabs them in the back and throws them to the ground, flips her staff, and goes in for the kill. Other times, she hoists up a guy up in the air, guts them, and then throws them down. And it is, it is quite a sight to see. Then, there are bigger camps in which you have to be really smart about your moves. You can't just pick these guys off with stealth because there are some enemies you just have to face hand-to-hand. -hand. Humans 
humans, while they they take a little longer than machines to go down, where where there where there is one, th- where there is one, there's usually many. Taking down camps in the game can be more challenging, but there are times when I would I wouldn't start one because I knew I could kill most of the guys in the camp just to lose to the last guy that had a big shield and i'd end end up getting frustrated because i would put a decent amount of time into a camp and only only to get defeated by the last guy and then have to start at the beginning so what can i say i i need to get good at the game but i end up i ended up playing the bigger camps on a lower difficulty just so i could get through them it didn't really affect my enjoyment of the game. It, it'd be it would be nice if I could actually defeat them on on the regular difficulty, but I mean, it wasn't one of my favorite parts of the game to begin with. I care more, way more about the main quest, side quest, and meteor activities out there. So if you couldn't tell, I love Horizon Forbidden West. I I play this on a PS4 Pro again because I don't have a PS5. If you played on a PS4, let me know in the comments below. If you don't have a PS5, the game still looks fantastic. There are things I could say about this game that, but I've, I've, I've already en- invested enough time in spilling out my entire heart to you about this game. So let's sum this up. For fun factor, I would say this game is a 9.5 for fun factor. Excellent job, Gorilla, in making every opportunity to tell stories. After I had finished this game and the credits rolled, I just sat and watched the credits roll down down the screen, and I felt an enormous relief finishing this game. It was one of the best games that I've personally ever played. I will say Horizon Forbidden West improves on every bit of its predecessor, except for... Um, those, except for those reasons I said before, but also some of the animals in this game have certain override limitations. You have time limits on some of them. And I, I like the aspect of forever overriding the animals in Horizon Zero Dawn. Outside of that though, this was many steps in the right direction. Next up is Price. This is one of the few games out there that I will argue that you will you should absolutely pay full price on. Right now the game is on sale for $39 and it may be odd to hear this but don't even acknowledge a sale here. The des- the devs here in my opinion deserve every bit every penny of that $59.99 or that $69.99 if you get on PS5. A lot of hard work went into this game and for me it was well 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 worth worth the asking price so bravo gorilla last up is time requirements according to howlongtobeat.com an average of 60 hours it is what it takes to do main and extra stuff so i guess i took an extra 35 hours longer than normal the game took about 30 percent of my 2022 year and if it takes up that much of a year year then it is time well spent if you've if you are limited on the number of games you can get definitely make this one of them between the way side quests are designed and the way exploration is handled this game can absolutely be played in bite-sized chunks you can play it for a little while each night of the week and you will be very satisfied so at the end of the day can you play horizon forbidden west if you couldn't tell already i categorize this without hesitation as a play now don't wait till you're done with your current game don't wait for a sale this is one of the best experiences you will have in 2022 and i will be making my voice heard when it comes to voting in the game awards So what do you think about Horizon Forbidden West? Share your thoughts below in the comments. The next game I will be discussing with you guys is we're going to be sticking with the PlayStation area, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Should you play it in 2022? Just a reminder to like and subscribe. Uh, that, That helps out the channel if you've gotten value from this review. Hit the bell icon to get more reviews from a busy person's perspective and discussions on upcoming games. Until then, go spend time with your families. Ace that next test and book that next gig and i'll see you guys on the next one peace